Good evening, George Orwell. Perhaps we should start with you telling us a little about yourself. I like um, English cookery, English beer, French red wine, Spanish white wine, Indian tea, strong tobacco, coal fire, candlelight, and comfortable chairs. Go on. I, I dislike big towns, noise, the motor car, the radio, tinned food, and central heating. Interestingly... And have... modern furniture. Uh, quite. All writers are vain, selfish, and lazy. And at, at the bottom of their motives there lies a mystery. And so you have no control over what you write. Writing a book is a horrible, e exhausting struggle. Like a long bout with some painful illness. One would never undertake such a thing if one were not driven by some demon one can neither resist nor fully comprehend. 1984, uh, with its thought police, Room 101 and Big Brother, has given us a language with which we can defy oppression. What demon drove you to dream up 1984? I do not think one can assess a writer's motives without knowing something of his early development. His subject matter will be determined by the age in which he lives. But before he ever begins to write, he will have acquired an emotional attitude from which he will never completely escape. From a very early age, perhaps the age of five or six, I knew that when I grew up I should be a writer. Uh, between the ages of about 17 and 24, in Burma, I tried to abandon this idea, but I did so in the consciousness that I was outraging my true nature and that sooner or later I would have to settle down and write books. Yeah, but at this stage you were still Eric Blair, and the brand of literature that you first attempted was the polar opposite of 1984. At that it? time, I, I wanted to write enormous naturalistic novels with unhappy endings, full of detailed descriptions and uh, arresting similes, mm -hmm. <laughs> and also full of purple passages. Mm. Uh, one critic has claimed that you cannot blow your nose without moralising on conditions in the handkerchief industry. But were you such a political firebrand when George Orwell was invented in 1933? I spent five years in an unsuitable profession, the Indian Imperial Police in Burma. I then underwent poverty and a sense of failure. This increased my natural hatred of authority. But these experiences were not enough to give me an accurate political orientation. In the Road to Wigan Pier, you uh, venerate the working class. Uh, for an old Etonian like yourself, that is a political act. Uh, using the word political in the widest possible sense, desire to push the world in a certain direction, to alter other people's idea of the kind of society they should strive after. So you were, by your early thirties, a political writer? No book is completely free of political bias. The Spanish War turned the scale, and thereafter I knew where I stood. Every line of serious work that I've written since 1936 has been written, directly or indirectly, against totalitarianism. In a more peaceful age, I might have written ornate or merely descriptive books. As it is, I've been forced into becoming a sort of pamphleteer. In London, England, with war raging all around them, people need entertainment. But they don't want this. Although it may look like good old-fashioned fun, it's upset a lot of decent folk. The kids playing pigs are leading a revolution against the farmer. It's all based on a new book, Animal Farm. In an exclusive interview, its author, Brit George Orwell, gives us the lowdown on this showdown hoedown. The actual details of the story didn't come to me for some time, until one day I saw a little boy, perhaps ten years old, driving a huge cart horse along a narrow path and whipping it every time it tried to turn. It, it struck me that if only such animals became aware of their strength, we would have no power over them, and that men exploit animals in much the same way that the rich exploit the proletariat. Animal Farm was the first book in which I tried 
with full consciousness of what I was doing to fuse political purpose and artistic purpose into one hell. Uh, some say politics has no place in art. The opinion that art should have nothing to do with politics is itself a political attitude. What I most wanted was to turn political writing into an art. Animal Farm was the first product of this approach, but uh, before it was even published, you were considering 1984, were you not? I thought of it in 1944. In 1984, true love between individuals is impossible, only hate is allowed, the only permissible love for power. This bleak future you seem to be forecasting for Britain. Could totalitarianism really happen in a democracy like ours? I do not think that the kind of society I describe will arrive, but that something resembling it could arrive, and that totalitarianism, if not fought against, could triumph anywhere. <laughs> 